I'm Steve, GZRTOW. I'm Dan, M0TGN. And we're here today to talk about soldering. Uh, we're going to go right back to basics and show you how to solder. And uh, that might be because you're brand new to soldering. Could be that you've been soldering for a very long time, but um, you need a bit of a refresher. Um, or it could be that uh, you've done it ages ago and you've forgotten what's involved. Soldering is the uh, method in which we bond two surfaces together to make a good mechanical joint and electrical connection. Now, those two surfaces can be a component to a PCB, uh, could be a wire to another wire, or it could be even soldering up a connector. Now, soldering is achieved by using a soldering iron and some solder, like what I'm holding here. Um, we use the soldering iron, we heat it up, it gets very hot, the solder melts and uh, we'll show you this anyway in a moment. Okay, there are some safety considerations that we need to uh, draw attention to before we start actually doing any soldering. Um, clearly to melt solder it, the iron's got to get hot so there's a, a risk of burning your skin, uh, you need to be careful of that. Um, the, uh, the solder itself can give off fumes so it's always good to do it in a well ventilated room like we've got here today. Some people sit next to an open window to, uh, to make sure the fumes don't affect them. And um, when you cut off the uh, component leads, which you'll see in a moment, uh, they can fly off. So it's always worth, um, if you wear spectacles already, keep them on or wearing some safety spectacles. It's beautiful. The equipment we're using today, we're going to be using an 18 watt uh, Antex soldering iron. And this is perfect for hobbyists uh, like ourselves. Um, it's not going to melt uh, massive chunks of solder, it's not going to be able to adhere huge sections of metalwork together, but it's going to be good enough for us to put components onto a circuit board. So this one is rated at 18 watts. Uh, this is the one we're going to be using in a moment. Uh, with a solder, uh, soldering iron, of course we want to use a stand to make sure it's uh, protected and as Steve mentioned already, it's got the risk of burning. So make sure that we put this in the stand when we're not using it. And the solder we're using today is a 60-40 mix of lead solder. Um, there is lead-free available, but I personally find that leaded solder gives a better connection. Um, and so that's what I have here today. We're going to use this one. So if I get the camera, you get the iron. Let's go soldering. Okay, before we actually start soldering, I want to just talk a little bit about preparation. Um, before we do any joint, we should take the iron Give it a little clean on the wet sponge that's on the stand and then tin the end of the iron which means just introducing a little bit of solder onto the tip to give us a nice molten point. That helps with heat transfer and to um, allow the solder to flow better. So for the first uh, component what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit a little resistor and we take the resistor with its leads bent to the appropriate um, size and it into the hole like that and you'll notice that the resistor sits down as close as possible to the printed circuit board. What I do is I hold that with my finger, turn it over and bend the leads back a little bit so it doesn't fall out. Okay so what we do now is we turn him over and we're going to solder those legs into place. As I mentioned before, quickly tin the iron. And then the routine here is to place the soldering iron onto the printed circuit board so it's touching the printed circuit board and the component leg. Now we introduce the solder, a couple of millimetres and hold it there for a second. You should see it flow onto the pad. And then we take the iron away and there's a nice bright solder joint that's been made for us. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the board round and the reason I've done that is it makes it much easier to get into the second leg with the iron. So again, give them a clean, little tin, and then onto the component, bit of solder, hold it in position while it flows. Maybe just a little bit more solder. Count to three, take the iron away. And again, we've got a nice neat solder joint. I'm just going to clean the tip and pop it down. Okay, now we've got the component soldered in place. What we're going to do is cut off the excess of the leads. Now just to demonstrate what can happen, if I just snip that off, in that case it's stayed in the cutters, but sometimes it flies off and that's why you need the eye protection. There we go. Just keep those little bits to one side. 
and there we have it. Okay, now we've got a resistor in there, I'm going to fit a capacitor uh, on the same board. It's the same routine, pop him into the uh, appropriate spaced holes, get the component as close as we can to the printed circuit board, flip it over, bend the legs back so it doesn't fall out, and then we're going to solder them in place. Okay, let's give the iron a clean and tin the end again and then always come in from the center of the components there you get lots of good access introduce the solder onto the component and a little bit more hold them in place for a few seconds one two three take the iron away and we've got a nice joint and if we flip the board around so we can access the other side again clean the tip give him a tin And then iron on the board, touching the component leg, introduce the solder, you see it flow nicely, take the iron away. Clean it, pot it down. And we cut off the excess of the lead. It's always good to hold the lead actually and snip it. That prevents it flying off in any direction. Same again. And there we go. And we've got two components on the board. Okay, what we're going to do with this next component is show you how not to do it. And uh, this is a technique we've seen used by many newcomers and it, it seems like a good idea, but it doesn't work very well. So um, I'm going to put another capacitor on the board and uh, show you how not to do it. Okay, so I'm going to put that into the, the holes. Same routine, bend him over. So far, so good. Um, now what some people do is they take the iron, they don't clean it or anything. They put lots of solder onto the thing and then kind of paint it onto the component like this and as you can see it's just really not doing the job at all it might look like it's connected but it really won't hold up okay it could be that you make a, a poor joint like that by accident not because you intended to do it the way to recover that is to clean the iron get any any of the mess off there tin it properly and then introduce the iron and hold it into position for a few seconds introduce a little bit more solder so you get the, the flux in there to make it flow nicely one two three and take the iron away and that's not too bad at all now okay i uh, hope that's been useful and uh, some good pointers for you uh, just to let you know, the irons that we've been using, they're readily available. You can get them from Maplins or online from CPC, Rapid Electronics. Uh, I think you can even get them from Amazon. Uh, but wherever you buy them from, make sure they come with a stand. That's not always the case. Okay, so happy soldering. And uh, if you get stuck at all, you can contact us uh, through the Bath Buildathon or G M0, TGN, G0FUW. We're all online and um, hopefully we'll hear from you soon.